Hello everybody, this is TSDL, Season 8, Round of 16. We have Aaron Noah vs. Spike MH. We see Azusa in Aaron Noah's box. I'm just gonna call him Airy. And... Um, yeah, this should be the last Round of 16 game. There is, um... One or two that needs to be reviewed. God, excuse me. Anyway. Harry has a pretty aggressive box. It's a one tank box, uh, two healer box. Uh, and then just a lot of good DPS. Spike, on the other hand, is playing a two tank box. And... Still a three healer box, so... Spike is definitely leaning more towards the tank push side of things, whereas Aerie is looking to play the trade game with all these DPS. First bans Hilda because that's what a single target box generally does, and then second bans Rosin because Rosin's good against a lot of units in Aerie's box. Uh, Elwyn, Ham, Diehard, IBC, Luke, Cherry, all, all care, even Azusa, all care about Rosin quite a bit. And then Ham gets banned because Airy is probably going to end up playing without a tank. Although that does depend on the route that Spike chooses. As for what Spike's banning, first ban Werner. Werner is damn good at busting turtles. He's one of the assassins with the highest kill ranges. His double strike does absolutely absurd damage. And so... His, one of his bigger issues is Werner's reach is less than most other assassins, which matters a lot less against a turtley opponent. And then bans IBC, so Aerie can't get a free attack buff and a range advantage, and Archon, because Archon's pretty damn good against Christy. Um, does, he doesn't have... Christy doesn't have... Hilda's... Displacement Immunity Aura. Sherry and Helena getting banned. Again, Aerie is just targeting the legs here and targeting people that can double kill against this tankless comp. And that's Sherry. Helena's the legs. Picking up Luke, who... Definitely a great unit. Hopefully, the uh, the idea with her is one, she's buffed with she's buffed by Christy, and two, she can jump in, get a kill, and still have her revive up after that. It does depend on who hits her. Um, Luke can kill Sherry in some conditions. She will probably end up bringing firebrands to ensure that. And then Spike bans out Kira and Hilda. Now Ari is locked out of getting a tank. There is Sissy. Um, and then interestingly, Spike picks up Pepsi. Pepsi here is probably not going to be somebody engaging immediately, but instead Pepsi will be the endgame cleanup. Brings a buff, which could be good if Spike can pick up Burner. That's the only other meteor in this box, though. And Spike bans out Kira because she's one of the ways Aerie has to get past his Spike's Christy. Harry bans out Burner, buffed by Pepsi, makes sense, and IBC, doesn't want Spike to have too much mobility. The attack up was also pretty scary. Diehard's a good pick here. He can jump in, get a kill, can potentially kill Lucretia, straight up. It just depends. Is Lucretia meddling or not? Spike picks up Autocrado. Autocrado, we've, we've seen him a fair amount recently, and the sentiment has pretty much always been the same. Against Tank Push, he's really damn good. Uh, against this, against Rush Conch, that gets right out, and Ares' response to that is to pick up Rosin. 
which actually nullifies the majority of Otto's kit. Otto now has only one thing he can really do, which is you bring a sword breath, and that just lets him steal some more buffs. So you, you can also bring Usurp just to push people back and steal buffs too. Um, but So you drop Provoke and you bring Sword Breath instead, since Provoke doesn't do anything against Rosin. And then for 2C you can bring Usurp, which is pretty much going to be his best loadout against Rosin, but it's, it's not that effective. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. Rosin really... Like, Rosin makes his 3C not that good, but there's still potential for swap plays. And since it's not good as a damage tool anymore, you're more free to use it for these swap plays, right? Ares last pick is T-Jess. T-Jess is pretty much here just to teleport. Um, not gonna be too effective hitting into the hitting into this Christie. Area has a nice lineup of a full Meteor Assassin team against this tank push cop. So it's going to be interesting to see how much work Auto Aura and Christy Aura can put in to maybe keep Pepsi or Auto alive. Maybe even Sissy could live because of that against like Pepsi. It depends on stack. One sort of negative thing about Sissy is that it's the Pepsi on Aranoa's side. Uh, Sissy killing her uh, summons will fuel this fuel Ares Pepsi, but it also fuels Spike's own Pepsi. Not too bad. Not too bad. Spike certainly has more control over that. I think there's potential for both comps to win here. It's just gonna come down to the plays. You can tell this Dieheart was picked as an answer to this, Lucretia. So we we should be pretty confident that it's Arcane Battle Garb and he's gonna run Sneak Attack. Which can kill Luke through her revive. And glory of the world. Spike does have an act again, but the issue with Sissy is, she, since she's so stack-based for it, um, it can be hard to just give over a turn priority because it's a big skill. I think I liked um, a different troop choice. I'm not sure which, but... Double red against Die Heart could be a little scary in endgame, but maybe it's not too bad. Ah! Bring Hegemony on Autocrata. I do think against Rosin you should drop Provoke, just because it, it just doesn't do anything. Like, <laughs> it's just useless. <laughs> Hegemony is not the worst choice, but... I mean, you could like, even argue drop Hegemony and then uh, drop 3C too, and or not drop Hegemony, you could argue drop 3C and run Usurp Hegemony or something. Maybe even a guard in some situations. Yeah, Luke did bring Firebrands, brings Heaven Sanction just to poke the enemy Pepsi, get rid of his shield, and um, also stop him from hiding potentially. Inspire on the sissy. And accelerated aid for Aries side just to give a little bit of a boost. Die Heart indeed with the sneak attack build and no strike. Very interesting skill set from Aerie. Standard cherry loadout. And those strikers are very interesting. Really wants that damage. I, I don't think that he's picking move again for any other reason than this 10% damage. Just to really ensure Die Heart kills something. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think not running strike is fair. Plus, Aerie has the range advantage anyway, and a teleport. 
There's plenty of ways to get around it. Bike has a slower comp. And Lucretia's pushing up is limited because of this Die Hard anyway. That's kind of why Strike's good, because it'd be even more limited. Still, maybe Aerie wants to try and bait this Lucretia in more and then teleport Die Hard at while the Lucretia thinks she's safe. Just that sort of layered plan. With how Aerie was talking about how he likes to just bait. Like, I could see that mindset. This is Die Hard's range. And Luke. I mean, yeah, Luke could move here, but then you do that and. Also, maybe Spike counts against Strike that isn't actually there. True. Okay. Ares leaving up this T Jess and this Die Hard last. He's really hunting this Luke. In fact, turn one is kind of the best opportunity to do this. Yeah. Doesn't pop Miracle. I don't think Die Hard needs it to kill Luke, so... But turn one is definitely the best opportunity for Die Hard to remove this Luke. Otherwise, you could be teleporting into a Lucretia action. Um, Spike doesn't have any way to stop Die Hard from coming in and killing. But... Die Hard, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can teleport here. Yeah, Die Hard actually does not reach Lucretia currently, so it's very dangerous for this Lucretia to move up. Does he reach now? Yes, he does. However, this could still be a bait, because you could just move Lucretia back even more. The game's already begun. You are not safe on turn one. Yeah, I already making that decision. Do I set, do I teleport in? be very easy for Lucretia to just move back in response to that. But if you don't teleport, then there's no way Die Hard reaches to begin with. So it doesn't seem like there's gonna be a play made here. It's just too easy for Spike to counteract it. Move again could also be cool just to guarantee the stun on who Aerie would like. Killing auto, not really useful. Let's go in with Die Hard. He's gonna hit Christy? Or, um, he's Terrain Master and these are flying, right? <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. The Heaven Sanction is... Yeah, I get, he... Uh, Die Hard was going for Pepsi, I think. And... Spike feels like he has to use Heaven Sanction to injure Die Hard and stop this. But now, Spike, now Die Hard's just gonna go straight for Lucretia, and this should still be a kill. Die Hard might die, but no, the animation's too fast. Big crit, so 
That's a dead Lucretia. He stuns the auto. Your only choice of spike here is to kill Die Heart. You have to. You simply cannot let this Die Heart get a free kill. Very fitting music for that sort of forced decision. So the stun won't be that impactful at the end of the day because, I mean, Sissy can just purge it. This does burn Pepsi's cooldown. However, Sissy can sacrifice units, get it ticked down a bit faster, she can sacrifice at least one, so rather than this having a three turn cooldown, we can more so think of it as a two turn cooldown. So that does give Aerie some time to make a play. Pepsi did bring Shadow Stealth. But Aerie does not have any sort of AoE, so... Pepsi can kind of just run up for free, and Aerie can't do anything to stop it. So maybe not having a skill isn't the worst thing, because it's not like you're going to need it to kill, say, t -Jess. What did Rosin bring? She brought Miracle. And I'm guessing this is a... Um, New healing accessory rosin, so she's fixed immune. She has maidens. So Pepsi might not be able to Pepsi's not gonna kill her without a skill, that's for sure. Or probably just not in general. Oh, the HP is a little low. Only 10,000. Four stack Pepsi with the skill might still be enough. And against this Christy, t is just functionally useless. So I guess one of the best plays here is stun with Sherry and then go hunt things. <laughs> Since he dropping the Inspire, will be a bit of time until she can act again. You could get lucky. Yeah, two war- well, okay, no. She can act again next turn. No matter what. Very positions forward, very aggressively. Does not breathe. Which means she cannot reach. Um, I mean, she can shat like, in this position, she could Shadow Raid, but she won't act again after it, because there's gonna be two units, so that's not a good choice. It does mean Christy on Spike side is a little locked here, because you don't really want to give that act again, necessarily. Well, it's, yeah, because Shadow Raid into Stun isn't really what Aerie wants to do, either. Um... Harry wants to stun and then go kill something. <laughs> or use Shadow Raid to bounce off and then go kill something with 3C, which there isn't a play there. So. The Pepsi reaches every. I don't need to count. <laughs>
It's looking, it's looking a little tough for Aerie here. The Rosin did really shut down this Autocrotto, but at the same time it costs the DPS. This is just a pop Pepsi shield. Steal some buff too, be annoying. We get some data, it's Spirit Boots Autocrotto. Most of them are, these days. Oh yeah, this, I t I'm tired. The stun is undispellable, so that does give... There was an opportunity there, but Aerie doesn't think it's worth it. Instead, he just wants to get rid of Pepsi Shield, which I think is fair. He just wasn't exactly ready. And next I'm imagining most of Pepsis are gonna move, and the thing is, Sissy can summon something and then, like, fog it. Or, she can summon it, she can summon and reach an attack, and then it'll die from the, the summon will die from the counter. But you want to move Pepsi first so he can get a shield up. Regardless, I think that's what both players are going to do, so they can both have a shield again. Spike doesn't really have to push up. It's not like if Aerie's in the center of the map that Spike can... that Spike can't stop that. <laughs> Still... Spike's biggest win condition is Pepsi. This is definitely playing Protect the Pepsi. If you lose the Pepsi, you do not really have a DPS anymore. Like, Autocrotto is not a... not known for his ability to single-target things. <laughs> He's known for his ability to be annoying while doing it, but... So since Spike moved his Pepsi, that means the next action from Spike could be to just if the next action from Spike could be to summon something and then suicide it into Aerie, and then that would give Spike's Pepsi a shield, and Aerie's Pepsi would not get a shield. So Aerie probably needs to move Pepsi here. That way. He can guarantee, if Spike makes such a play, that his Pepsi will have a shield again. It'll be two turns until Autocrotto has an AoE again. So yeah, the... The play here for Spike, for sure, is you have to put up shield on Pepsi. You cannot stop Pepsi from reaching. The only chance he has of survival is with his shield. Thus, Sissy must move. And, I mean, honestly, you can just, like, summon infantry. Just roar this Pepsi. Just use his faction buff. If you hit that, Pepsi's gonna be dead for uh, many turns. That's what I'd do. I mean, otherwise, Pepsi just dies, right? It's a pretty easy play to come to. <laughs> Did not get the buff, but regardless, this still stops Pepsi from dying. Didn't get his attack buff either.
Who knows what accessory this sissy is? It's not Bracer. Could be the new healing accessory. The three stack Pepsi. Doesn't have to attack an auto or a range, so that's not a big deal. There is a Christie. Not so sure Pepsi has a target, and Ares seems to agree. I don't know how Aerie's gonna bust Spike open here. It's gotta be a stun play with Sherry, but... That was that's Miracle Burn from Rosin too. Oh, Krato's AoE's back up. Harry has no way to get a shield back on his Pepsi. Spike's Pepsi is ready to go next turn. As long as Spike plays right, it's gonna be hard for Sherry to even get an act again off the stun play. Plus, there's an axe again on deck. That spike's just chilling. Doesn't really have to push. And Ari is also retreating. His cooldowns have been used. He would probably like to not engage until Raz of Miracle is back up. Maybe Sherry does a little, another little poke. Sherry did breathe. Are we just going to see Sherry pop the Pepsi shield again, and then run away again? <laughs> that will be how Ares Pepsi gets its his fourth stack, as well as his shield back up. Because it'll force Spike again to suicide of Sissy Summon. Prado just keeps poking. I mean, yeah, it does like no damage, but he clocks, so not punished. <laughs> and you're never gonna get through the rods and stacks ever. Not with just Autocrado. I mean, he's only doing one. He's doing two debuffs. Yeah, two. But Spike like, okay, I'll just keep chucking these auto AoEs. Maybe I'll clock again. Rosin does not have crystal healing. Or mass crystal healing, but auto does not clock, so. I mean, like, look at this. Just no damage done, really. I mean, you just single target heal the t death, and you're basically fine. So the Sherry pop the Pepsi shield. We notice that it's not a glory of the world Sherry, so Pepsi shouldn't have any trouble killing the Sherry. The act again play did give turn priority over to Aerie. But it seems that Aerie is willing to let Pepsi come. 
I mean, there's nothing you can do to save Sherry. Could've... I mean, you could've popped Pepsi Shield and ran away, but... We'll just see. He just is the only particularly injured person, so... This bike doesn't have to go in with Pepsi. There's no way for Sherry to get a stun and an acting out. I actually don't think she even... Yeah, that's... that's... I mean, she could Shadow Raid and then stun. Then T just can jump in, teleport, and kill something, but killing auto isn't very impactful, and Pepsi has shield right now, so should not be able to kill that. Harry just doesn't have a great target. However, Spike is out of time. Harry is approaching that, but still has a comfortable amount. So yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Well, we don't know. Will the stun... Oh yeah, duh. This... Pepsi, of course, will not have a shield, so... And you can't refresh Pepsi's shield, so now at this point... Sherry, you still don't have to do anything. Because <laughs> Sherry didn't go for the stun. Hitting Chris is pointless. We also see that it's probably an Overlord's badge. Good info to have for other games. Now the question, does Pepsi go in? No, he doesn't. Just puts the pressure on Aerie. There's no way to target this Pepsi anymore. Sherry doesn't ever act again, didn't breathe. Can still reach auto and stun Christy. Tenyo Breeze on Pepsi. Surprised Aerie didn't bring AoE on Rosin to pop Pepsi Shield or Hide? Yeah, that would have been a good tech. I mean, I can understand why you would bring Mass Crystal Healing, but I mean, yeah, you just drop single target heal. Wonder why he didn't stun Chris last turn. Yeah, yeah, I thought that's exactly what Aerie was going for. You break the Pepsi Shield, then you stun Christy, and then you can hop in with T-Jess right after that. I guess... I guess the problem might be that Pepsi goes and kills T-Jess. I do think that Pepsi reach. Then as Pepsi loses shield and as Pepsi trades, yeah, yeah. I know the sun play looks good. Yeah, it is fixed immune, sissy. Has the new healing accessory. And that's... On... Yeah, that's dead Pepsi. Maybe? No, it won't. Pepsi will live. And 
now the stun happened. T just jumps in. You can't kill Pepsi. He's hiding. No way to injure him. Christy's down for two turns, so... I guess you kill Otta? You maybe sissy? I mean, you hit with the AoE, but it's still not doing anything. I, I mean, t just doesn't have crystal healing, but... <sighs> These are not swords. <laughs> but we'll see. 3C, I think, should kill, but it's... Yeah, okay. The Christy Aura is too much, as well as t just not having an attack buff and missing some troops. Barry does have turn priority. Elite mercenary really hobbling T Jess's follow up. And Pepsi should kill Pepsi here. Now it's looking pretty tough for Aerie, I mean... Can't hit Pepsi. Really good positioning. Puppet proving that it still has a lot of value. Body blocking the Pepsi. I mean, he had a shield anyway, so it's not like Sherry would have been able to kill. But she also wouldn't have been able to act again. Sherry takes out Auto with Shadow Raid, which does give her the Act Again play. What do you hit now? Just runs away. Makes sense. Then Spikes. Pepsi takes t -Jess. But now it's just Sherry and Rosin. Still, the only DPS is Pepsi. And the melee does mean Pepsi loses a shield. Christy won't be able to guard. Can Sherry kill this Pepsi? Elite Mercenary taking out the Maiden. Well, no. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Good enough. Good enough. It's all gonna come down to and this Sherry kill Pepsi. The only route left for Aerie. And she gets counter killed as Sherry does best, but I mean, it is a. Uh, yeah, Aerie concedes. No way to come back from that. <laughs> the only way you can win is if Pepsi dies, and zombies are too bulky. I do kind of feel that it was Rosin in the previous game that gave Ari a hard time. Maybe to some extent it's also being player two. As we can see, Ari chose player one. It was just a lot harder for Ari to play the trade game, and Spike just played nice and safe, stuck in tank range. Auto was still surprisingly useful just for popping Pepsi shields. 
And he makes a very small adjustment. Takes out Azusa? Puts in Himiko. Maybe wants something to bust a turtle. <laughs> Interestingly, we see Christy get taken out and Lando get take, put in. I hope Lando's also OLB. Otto got taken out. And instead, Spike brings in Azusa himself. A nice traitor. Or not even a nice traitor, just a nice uh, single target DPS. So far the band's going the same way. Probably see Spike pick Lando. This time Aerie first picks that IBC. Really strong. Um, everybody in Aerie's box can be buffed now by mass attack. The mobility is of course strong as well. And Lando and Spike's box does open up several picks. Werner, Pepsi, and IBC all could be good options here. The Himiko comes out. Really hoping this Landius is not Overlord's badge. Rosin does get banned, as well as Kira. Spike again. Making sure Aerie can't pick up a tank. This time Spike takes out Pepsi. I guess Pepsi was pretty troublesome last game. Bans Luke and Archon. Archon cannot displace Landius, but... It doesn't really matter too much. He'll just displace somebody else anyway. Um... Mostly see if the spike is just banning the threatening assassin there. And then Lucretia, she can AoE combo with Himiko a little bit. Doesn't want that to come out. And Lucretia's just annoyed. Had to revive. Strong single target. I mean, against Landius, maybe not so strong single target, but still bustable. With enough other pools. Ham could come out here. Yes. Ham does come out. Precisely because Ham is really good against Landius. Spike is still playing very defensively with the ensuring that a healer can't get banned out. Or can't, ensuring that he can't get banned out of healers. Maybe a bit too defensively. But nonetheless, Sherry's a strong pick. Can potentially kill Himiko straight up with her act again. Or just generally approach, walk up, stun people. Yeah, and I figured exactly where Aerie was going is you ban out the IBC because you don't want Sherry to get that plus two mobility buff, and you ban out the ham because it's, damn, he's strong. Elwyn and Helena are still scary for this tankless composition, but I would I think it's fair to say ham's a bit scarier. Whereas Spike now is continuing to ban out the Assassins. Bans Die Hard and Sherry. Doesn't want any stun shenanigans to happen on his Lando. Yeah, Helena's a good choice here. Not her best map, but I mean, it's fine. It's not like Helena cares that much. Which prompts Aerie to pick up the sissy. Wants to have her for that guard so Helena can't just run in and kill. Elena's also an answer to this Elwyn. She can kill his revive with her after battle AoEs. And I feel, yeah, I was gonna say, there's no way Spike picks Werner here, right? Elwyn's so good. Looks very dangerous for Aerie here. There is a tank in Sissy. So that's good. I think Himiko's going to have to do a lot of work. And I guess that would be why Aerie picks Roz in the last game, because he knows the spike can always force 
Aerie, our Aerie knows that Spike can always force him into having two healers at the end here. So no matter what, Aerie just cannot get 5 DPS unless you actually ban a healer. Rosin was very good against Auto. Auto would have been a much worse threat last game had that Rosin not been picked. It looks tough for Aerie again. It's just so hard to get through this Landius. I mean, it's not like Aerie doesn't have the ability to kill this Landius. There, there's plenty of units that can... Plenty of ways to do that between Elwyn, Ham, and IBC. Even back again, or Himiko softening them up. But the issue is that you will have to spend multiple actions to do this. And Spike has some very excellent trade units. I mean, he has Sherry. He also has Helena and Elwyn who can hop in and get the engage on Aerie first. But Aerie does have IBC, so maybe she can make something happen. I mean, the thing is though, IBC isn't exactly giving this team more mobility than they would have had otherwise. So it's a little awkward in that regard, right? Still, the soldier attack buff will be very good. Looks like Bracerham. The mass attack is also still very useful from IBC regardless. Lando did bring heavy Centaurians, and it is not an Overlord's badge Landius. So Himiko is pretty deadly. When you're fighting Himiko with a tank without mobility down immunity, every time you have that ninjutsu debuff, you have like a 25% chance of your tank getting a mobility debuff after they end their action and that breaks your guard. <laughs> Kinda spooky. Helen bringing defense break. Interesting. Doesn't look like Twilight Star. It looks like it's just some normal attack accessory. I think the int would be higher if it was Twilight Star. And then plus you'd probably see Crush as well. All the other skill sets are as standard as they could be. See, what would have been 200 IQ is if Elwyn brought Phalanx. <laughs> just give him the IBC buff with Phalanx and just to send him in. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. <laughs> Because it would stop, it would stop both, it would stop both Ellen and Elena from killing him. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he's gonna kill after that, but... <laughs> uh. Bracer Ellen on Aerie's side. Good information for... Well, I mean, Spike doesn't have to think about it next game, because if he- Well, I know you still might, because he might lose, right?
Siegfried cheering on Ari. So Himiko is definitely going to be the opener here. Does not quite reach yet. I mean, I guess she does reach this way. It's a, uh, yeah, five block AoE. Nothing that can kill Himiko. Just send her back. Still, Himiko does probably want to hit three people with it. But... The ninjutsu debuff can be a win condition. But it could be okay to just go for it. Spike doesn't have much reason to push up right now. That one does not quite reach. I guess that could have. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you push up and try to threaten this Elwyn, then it's not that hard for Sissy to block up this choke or something, and then Helena won't be able to reach anyway. So, just staying in one range guard, one block of Landia, so when Elwyn or Ham do go in and potentially the spell guard, Spike's ready. And it will take Aerie one turn to get in range to start threatening things. An immediate act again on the Selena. Yeah, I think she reaches. So, Sissy... Yeah, so... Sissy moved. That prompts the act again, because one, two, three... Or one, two, three, four, five... Chiv... One... Two, three, four. Well, Aina doesn't reach, right? Oh, she got a breeze. I see. Okay. So yeah, she does. Exactly reaches with that breeze. And of course she is going for this Ellen. Does not kill. But this will, yeah. The pedal storm is enough. Very tanky, Ellen. And now Himiko is extremely injured. But there's no more AoE coming from Spike. Here you just kill Helena. Again, you're not just gonna let her run away for free. The question is how much capital do you invest into killing it? I mean... Having to use Ham 2C to kill her really sucks, but... Let's see, Royal Cavs are below the threshold. There is a good ch and you do have the... New Flow... Attack buff. These Gargoyles have 2,000 attack. And that's before entering battle, so I think a basic attack with Ham could have killed. But maybe Aerie wants to keep Ham's action saved. This should also kill, no problem. Plus, it puts some healing on Himiko as well. Which is just nice to have. Also, a 10-year restoration buff for good measure. Yana just putting 3C on Sherry. I mean, you don't put it on Lando because Lando gets all his buffs dispelled by the fan. Um, Elwood wasn't in range. You just put it on Sherry just so you have another way to heal, maybe. Doesn't matter too much.
So there is this Lancer preventing Sherry and Ellen. Sherry does not have a breeze. And Spike's pretty much just gonna push forward nice and slow. Probably mostly keep everybody in one block range, although now there's just ham for that single target follow-up. Yeah, Aerie doesn't care about hitting three people. He's like, whatever. I just want that mobility down. Oh, yeah, that's the... Okay, so it's not necessarily a mistake, because that's also why you wanted to put Liana 3C up. That way you have another way to remove debuff after Liana moves. Definitely, don't, definitely want to get rid of this while Ham is still around. Ham does reach Liana or Sherry right now. So the uh, the response has to be Sherry uh, purging this card. Or the, the mobility debuff. Excuse me. But as we talked about earlier, every time Landius moves, there is going to be... Or when Landius moves, there's going to be a 25% chance his legs get broken right there, and then Ham has another play right then. And Himiko clocked, which is very annoying for Spike to deal with. I imagine Spike's still gonna go back with Sherry. This is just to pop the Himiko talent. Also, put her out of follow up range. Okay. Just goes back, purges the mobility debuff. This will also be a very safe position for Sherry. Lando could like push up right there. And threatening up to here. Act again will be available for Aerie next turn. Ellen can go in, but there's a guard. Um, there is one turn left on it, but that's fine. It's not, it's not a big deal. IBC probably wants to just act again. Just to get a... Um, well, you don't need to right now. We do see that Aerie's sissy is pretty sick. This is a glory of the world, Liana. Like, definitely built to survive. Other than, interestingly, this normal attack accessory, Ellen. I wonder what's on it. So, Ham goes in. It is a two-turn heal reversal debuff, so I imagine Ham's going in on Ellen here. Yeah, Ellen can't respond to this. This will take one life off of Ellen, regardless. Um, the Sherry reach. I mean, she's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, Sherry was pushed back just a little bit too far. 
because now she can't follow up on this ham. Ellen doesn't die here because he can just go back safely into guard range. But he will be disabled for one turn. Next turn he can just uh, use his act again. He said he just uses his act again immediately. I... Okay, because he doesn't want to get killed by Liana, so he has to do that. And plus he wants to just heal Ellen up with Liana right now. Understandable, understandable. Himiko not in range. IBC also quite a ways away. But this does hobble Ellen's legs for three turns, which gives the rest of Ares and Eunice the opportunity to push up. Spike does not have Act again. Ares, on the other hand, does. Cherry cannot reach. Um, turn priority is on Ares' side. So Ham should be able to get out of this. Also, Clock Denihilation. Very nice. Spike still cautiously staying within one block range of Lando. We'll probably see a similar sort of... Well, yeah, Liana can't reach here, so Liana will probably go here because then there's Fog, you can't target her, and then Sherry can go, goes right here and kills the sword. Again, everybody stays in one block other than Liana, who is... Uh, body blocked by fog, so she can't be hit anyway. Good positioning. Ares just keeps pushing up. The guard has inspired on this Lancer. Cherry double hit next turn is scary, but I mean, hey, I'm just gonna move back, right? Yeah, Ham at the beginning of next turn, hey, I'm just gonna move right there. We'll still have a pretty relatively even game on our hands. It's uh, 4v4. Neither side has an easy engage. IBC is down for three turns. That's kind of why I liked using the act again earlier, but I mean, I guess it is a pretty long cooldown as well. Harry's still thinking about it. I mean, if you don't move Ham, he dies, right? Yeah. You gotta. Ten stacks for Sissy. But her 3C does still have a, so a slight cooldown. I think it's like two turns or something. This feels like a case study in what you get to do with sissy tanking utility versus bringing a dedicated tank. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, convention, or the... What's the word? The, um, compression of 
healer and tank is really good. It does offer a lot of value. Unless he should have brought Rosin though and played Bait the Helena. Yeah, if um if you if you Ari had Rosin there earlier with that Elwin, then Elwin actually does not die to Helena. So that was an opportunity too. I guess there was- you were up against player 2 with Act again, so I can understand wanting to have Sissy as a response to any Act again. That, that makes sense too, and I mean the tank has still given Aerie a lot of value. But that is another option for sure. Ceiling technique on the Sherry. Act again is up. Ellen cannot reach the ham, so the the Lancer moves here, puts up guard, then you can hit Himiko, then you can act again. Probably ham. I can understand acting again Himiko too, but nope, it is the ham. Lancer Kuhn moves right here, guards up that Himiko, L1 had to burn his act again so he can't reach. There's still this Lando to bust through. And this act again was sorta of wasted. Harry needed to pay a bit more attention to the turns there. Spike always had the chance to just burn out that action. So acting, having Act Again still here and not using it there I think would have been a lot better. Didn't see what the L1 Act Again play was for. Um. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> um, Aerie did have turn prio, so... It didn't matter for that. Himiko commences the poking. No Liana 3C up, so immediate, you have, you have to do this. You have to move with Liana. And then there is still that aforementioned chance of... Landius getting that mobility debuff. So Spike cannot move Landius right now. Very risky to do so. Cherry is on a forest though, so she should, she should be pretty safe against IBC, but Ham can kill her. Yeah, you burn the sissy action because it's not that useful. I mean, I guess you could like resummon a Lancer, but if Spike goes in, that's good for Airy. That that's like a dead Elwin or something. You look, you get lucky. <laughs> you didn't get the mobility debuff. <laughs> that could have been GG right there. <laughs> Maybe not GG, but it would have been a dead unit for Spike for sure. Very good position in my area getting that strike formation back up. But Ham's got a while. Yeah, of course, you just go for the Shadow Raid. But the stun, the silence from Ninjutsu. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn this unit! She's so annoying! <laughs> yeah, you can't hit Himiko there, he could've gone for IVC. Ah, 
Yeah, Ham cleanly takes a life from Ellen. Go reversal too, and another clock. But this does get the Ham killed. I think it comes back to it's you just had you Ari had to spend too much capital to get through this Landius. Unless this Ham lives, but yeah, no way. Now what do you do? Did Himiko clock? Himiko goes out. It's just IBC. Ash again's down. Elwyn got silenced by Himiko. <laughs> A blessing in disguise to run to get silenced, so maybe. What does Eri do here? Yeah, I guess all he could do is put up a guard. You know Landius will die. He has to be patient. It's gonna be a while until Eri can do anything. Cherry's gonna be up next turn. IBC has one turn for her 3C to be back up. Don't move Liana next to Landius. You you might kill him. I mean it's fifty percent. I don't. Th yeah, it, it, it'd be okay. But yeah, it'd be it'd be fine. You'd probably rather have Liana in tank range because Liana with her talent does like four thousand ish. Oh, but Liana might just die here. Oh. Well, Himiko is definitely not known for a single target. That was even with stealing, like, Elwyn buff and stuff. Yeah, Lando took about 2,000 damage. As I said, it heals about 4,000 if you don't have a buff. So IBC takes Lando's life here. Um... Himiko... Himiko dies? Punch with... Oh, no, kills... Going for IBC. Going for IBC. Hmm. I guess IBC is the bigger concern because IBC is the one that actually has her 3C coming up. And yeah, that is a kill. Very easy kill. Ella does not even need a skill. Himiko has to attack Liana here and kill her, but I don't think you'll win this 2v2. Yeah, Elwyn did indeed get Grasslands. I, I think he would have killed the hell out of her without him, but <laughs> definitely take what you can get. <laughs> yeah. Tries to kill Liana, this should go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And double act, kill Sissy, right? Yeah, that Owen did like 50,000 damage. <laughs> and this looks like GG. A clean finish. Damn. So, I think it does come back to the bad pick thing. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that. I, I feel that I, I definitely feel that Ari had a comp that could win. So, in both games, in both games, I would say Ari had a comp that could win. But I would say that Spike felt a bit favored. It looked harder for Ari to reasonably get through Spike's tank than it was for Spike to survive long enough to kill enough of Ares' units. And maybe maybe it's just some different decisions needed to happen here and there. Some different plays. Um, 
Antu mentioned could try to go for the bait Helena play with Rosin on Elwyn. Because that can cause... That does cause Helena to fail to kill him after his revive. He, with a, if he has crystal healing on him. But yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to Spike for advancing to the round of eight. And better luck next time to Ares.